Let's use charm.ai to make a Roblox NPC like the one shown here. First, we open up the geometry generator, where we've already created our character. From this view, we can switch over to the 3D animator, which allows us to rig and animate the character for the motions we want our NPC to take in the game. For this project, after rigging, we're going to want two different animations, one for running and another for the idle state. So now that the skeleton's connected, I'm going to look up the running animations and go through the list till I find the one I like. Once I find it, I select it and click Generate Animation. We're going to do the same for the idle animation. Switching over to our gallery, we can select the animation and make sure it looks all right. Then once we're satisfied, we will export the FBX. This is going to download an FBX file into my downloads folder. We're going to do the same for the run animation, then come over to Blender. We can import those FBX files to bring them into our scene. In the downloads directory, we locate those two FBX files and click the Import FBX button. Now we can see we have two different meshes available. We actually only need one of the meshes, and we can use the animation data to save a single FBX with all of the animations in it. So I'm going to delete the rig and the mesh from one of them, and that leaves me with just the other remaining. I come over to the animation panel and validate the data we have. Switching over to the action editor and then selecting the armature, I can see the keyframes for this animation. And playing it, I can tell that this is the idle animation. I'll rename that now. And the second action has a new set of keyframes. I can see this is the run forward animation. Now I'll export all this data into a new FBX file. After picking the location and the name of this file, we'll need to go over here to Path Mode. We'll set the Path Mode to Copy. The icon next to it makes sure that we include the texture and material information in our FBX file. I scaled to 0.05 because I find that's a good translation from the charmed platform size to the Roblox world size. Switching over to Roblox Studio, I'll select Import and import my FBX. And I'm gonna rename the animations here to make them a little easier to work with in the studio. I've noticed there's a bug where the second animation doesn't start playing properly until I've started typing. And then I need to hover over the name to see it reflected. Now that I've got my character inside the studio, we have to turn it into a full-fledged NPC. In order to do that, I have to add some nodes to the graph over here. First, I add a humanoid, and that needs to have an animator node inside of it. I no longer need this animation controller, so I'll get rid of it. Now I add a part called Humanoid Root Part. It's important to change the name because Roblox expects that specific naming. In the felt person model, I can set the primary part to humanoid root part. We also need to add a motor 6D. This allows us to link two parts within a model. We see down here there's a link for part 0, which will reference the humanoid root part, and part 1, which will reference the rest of the mesh. Notice how the mesh moved to the root location when we made that change. Under the humanoid, there's a property called hip height. We set that to 3. Also, we want to turn off collisions for the mesh, and we're going to do the same for the humanoid root part. This means we'll be able to walk through the character, and we don't really want the NPC interacting with the physical world. That's why we turn them both off. And I'll set transparency to 1 to make the root part transparent. Now we get to set up the logic of the character, and we're going to do that across two main scripts. The first one we're going to call felt script, 
This is how we're going to connect the items in our world to the underlying controller. The second is going to be in the form of a module. We've included the code for this module. It's called charactercontrollerscript.lua. There's a link to that in our GitHub repository in the notes below the video. You can copy that file in here. This contains all the basic control information for an NPC to follow different waypoints around a path and play the appropriate animation for the different character states. Now, in the actual character script, I just need to get everything hooked up properly. So the instance here is the parent of the script, which is my felt person model. And I need a reference to the animator object, which is inside the humanoid object. So let's look inside the instance and we can wait for the child humanoid inside of it using the wait for child method. And from the humanoid, we can wait for the animator child. We're just walking the node tree here. Now I'm gonna load my animations. I find it's kind of nice to have these references in the node tree. So I'm gonna make an animation node called idle. And you'll see down here in the properties that there's an animation ID property. So I just have to look in my toolbox and find my recent animations to copy the asset ID over. And then we just do the same thing for the run forward animation. Our character controller supports a jump animation as well, so if you want to come back in and create a new jump animation, import that and hook it up, it should all work appropriately. Paste in the animation ID for the run forward animation, and now I've got those two hooked up. In my script, I can load these animations to the animator object by referencing them in the node tree. So I'll create references to the idle and run forward animations here. Before we move on, I'm going to create some waypoints that our character will run between. What I'm going to need is a folder that holds the waypoints that my character will choose from. I'm going to call that waypoints. So I'm going to put the part inside the waypoints folder by setting its parent. Now I can duplicate the part and that will allow us to have two different waypoints. The character is going to pick one of their waypoints and run to it, sit idle for a few seconds, and then run to the next one. I need to reference these destinations from the waypoints folder. So we wait for that and then we get its children. This is the set of parts that are going to operate as our waypoint positions. Now I need to set up the Roblox pathfinding service. Our character controller is going to use this to determine how the character can get from one place to the other. It also helps transition the character between states. Once we have the service, we use it to create a path. We only need one path object for the character, and it will be reused over and over to run between waypoints. You can choose the parameters that you want to tweak your character's behavior. Here, we'll set the character up so it can jump, and as I said, you'll be able to hook up that animation later if you want to have a special jump animation. So now I'm going to import my character controller script. That is loaded as a module. And this script has a number of methods that we can use to control our character. First, we need to give it some references. So we set character and give it a reference to the model and each of the animations. And the names in set animation are important. We're using idle and run forward in this case. You can look at the con character controller script and see the set of animation names that are supported. 
We'll also give it a reference to the path object we created above, as well as the destinations. Now we kick things off by calling pick destination that sets everything in motion. Now we can test this out and see our character running from waypoint to waypoint using the run and idle animations that we added. Something pretty neat about the Pathfinder is that it helps the character figure out how to navigate from one place to the other. It'll go around obstacles, it can climb up ladders if you configure, agent can climb, and it will jump if necessary. So we'll move our waypoint on top of this box and see that in action. And there we go, the character can jump. It didn't play the jump animation because we haven't set that up in our character controller. But this is a good starting off point. If you want to see the things we've learned today in action, check out Charmed Lava Glider Island on Roblox. There's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.